What's up guy and girl players of WoW? This is Rutaro, aka Taro, and in this video I'm going to show you some general tips and answer some common questions about using the auction house. Check out my site at tarowowguides.com for the free complete guide. Okay, so I'm going to try to cover as many common mistakes and problems you might run into when using the auction house. One of the biggest mistakes I see sellers make is undercutting stacks when listing single items. Whether the buyer has auctioneer or not, single items will be displayed and bought first. Therefore, there's no reason to undercut stacks with a single item. This seller decided to undercut the stacks when they could have made 4 plus more gold by undercutting single items instead. So tip number one, if listing single items, don't undercut stacks. The next thing I usually see is a random person undercutting some crazy amount. I don't ever know their exact reasoning, but it's usually they leveled up their profession and want to quickly get rid of their stuff, they're trying to intimidate or undercut you out of the market, or they think it will sell faster at a lower price. As long as you don't overprice an item ridiculously, people are going to buy it whether it's 300 gold or 500 gold. So tip number two, if someone has undercut insanely, either buy it out if it's cheaper than map cost or simply list above it. Another common mistake is undercutting an item that is ending soon. This person's listing has less than 30 minutes left so there's no need to undercut it. Just list above it and let it run out of time. So tip number three, if the listing is ending in less than 30 minutes, don't bother undercutting it. Another thing I see sometimes is people who use an automated type auction house add-on that isn't suitable for the item they are listing. Although I don't know if this is the case, I do know add-ons like quick auctions can be great for glyphs, but horrible with flasks and scrolls. Add-ons can be great time savers, but can also take away some of the strategy out of listing the items. I can't tell an add-on not to cancel something or list something with conditionals. So tip number four, if you like using add-ons, make sure to always check what you've listed the item at afterwards. A more common mistake is when someone lists an item in a stack at the single price. This happens when the price is set, but the amount of the stack is left on its default. As you see here, someone accidentally listed five flasks for the price of one. Since I have a conscience, I messaged them and asked them if they wanted to buy the stack back for the 25G, but they said no because they screwed up, but thanks for the generosity. Sure, this is just a game, but I still got principles. So tip number five, pay attention to what you're doing, and again, check afterwards to see if you listed it correctly. If you catch it quickly, you should have enough time to cancel it. One thing all buyers find annoying is listing an item with only a bid. This is an eBay. You are likely to make less gold and for it to take a lot longer to sell an item compared to if you were just listing it with a reasonable buy out the first time. So tip number six, never list an item with only a bid. This is an eBay. Always include a buy out. Another thing I see sellers do is feel that they're forced to overpay for mats that they intend to make an item with to resell. If the prices are too high for the mats, try messaging the sellers for discount or being patient for prices to come down. Some good ways to prevent this from happening in the first place is to have someone consistently supply you with mats you need to craft, farm your own mats, or stock up in bulk when the prices are cheap. So tip number seven, be patient and purchase mats when they are reasonable. Remember, there's always tomorrow. Another common thing I hear is a lot of players want to play the auction house but have little knowledge to do so and rely heavily on add-ons like Auctioneer to do the work for them. While I believe Auctioneer is a great add-on, you still need to be careful and have knowledge of the items you intend to buy and resell. If an item is 30% of its normal value, this might be a great deal like you see here as I buy out these plans and resell them for double. But I knew people would pay that. If I only relied on Auctioneer, I would have bought out all the other plans and come to find that people weren't paying to pay crap for them. Other players also know add-ons can be tricked and you might spend 1487 gold on some bandages that are worth less than a gold. So tip number 8, have a good amount of knowledge of any item you plan to buy and resell instead of solely relying on an automation of an add-on. I want to sort of switch gears a bit and go over some common questions that some of you have sent me or posted on my forums. So how the hell do I eliminate competition? This one always makes me laugh a bit. Not that it's a bad question, but more that it's too simple and devious. You can't just tie them up while you own the auction house. Instead, know that competition will always cycle in and out, and the best thing you can do is one-up them with a sound strategy for whatever you're selling. Basically, let them eliminate themselves or learn to outplay them. You can check out my site for your profession for plenty of strat ideas. Another question I often get is how can I get mats for cheap? Everyone's situation is different, but I typically buy mats in mass quantities 
from other players at a discount, wait for the AH to be cheap and stock up, as well as farm them myself. If none of this works, I will look for other ways of making gold until the prices become reasonable. Don't feel rushed, there's always tomorrow and other items that you can be selling. Here's another question. What are the best add-ons for the auction house? This is really personal preference, but I use auctioneer to list and cancel items, postal to loot my mailbox, and quick auctions to list glyphs. I'll post some links on my site for each of them. Another question I get is how do you deal with being spammed and yelled at from other sellers and buyers? I would just ignore them, or if you really care, don't do anything unreasonable to piss them off in the first place. The players asking this question are usually doing something to make buyers mad like listing an item worth 100 gold for 1000 gold or making sellers mad by undercutting them by some crazily unreasonable amount. Yes, yes, it's just a game, but like I've said before, I have principles and since I want everybody to enjoy the game more, I will never overprice or undercut something insanely. I keep all prices within a reasonable range. And in turn, not only do I not get hate spam or mail, but I'm consistently asked all day long to make this, sell me that, or thanks for X item. People even go as far as buying my items over someone else's regardless if it's cheaper or not. Be good to people and they will be good to you. Lame or not, it's a good principle. All in all, when dealing with the auction house in any capacity, always be flexible and adapt to the situation. Every day is different and every server is different. So never be afraid to try new methods and ultimately see what works best for you in your situation. There is never only one answer to any question and there's always tomorrow. As a final tip, don't sit at the auction house all day worrying about gold. There are more things this game has to offer like socializing, raiding, PvPing, among other things. So try leaving the auction house once in a while. Well I hope this video was helpful to all the WoW players out there, and if you have any questions or comments you can post them on my forums at tarowowguides.com. Also don't forget to subscribe, just click the subscribe button to the right of my video, and go to my completely free website at tarowowguides.com as I'll be coming out with more videos and free guides to help all players have more fun in the world of Warcraft. Thanks for watching. Now go PvE or something. Wait, PvE? What the fuck?